Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital Muse YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. During her morning walk in the park, Christina halted when she felt the baby kick. She chose a bench to sit on in order to take a break. Dex was running at the moment when he reached the corner and saw Christina. He questioned her well-being out of concern. Christina responded, well, that depends on you. Cutting right to the chase, she informed him of Jocelyn's allegation that Sonny had given Dex the order to kill Cyrus. She questioned, that's not true, is it? She was horrified to see that it was true when Dex hesitated to respond. Yes, Dex replied. Christina began to apologize, but Dex would not accept that she was to blame for her father's death. Christina inquired as to whether Dex had seen any changes in her father since beginning his job with Sonny and more recently. Dex conceded that in the past few months, Sonny had exhibited signs of rapidly losing his cool. When she inquired as to whether her father had been paranoid, Dex disclosed that after the shooting incident in Puerto Rico, Sonny had been certain that there had been a traitor among them. Didn't take him long to decide that was me, and after that, there was no changing his mind, Dexter claimed. Although he admitted that Sonny had always been erratic, at that point it had turned into paranoia. Ava moved in right away, Christina remarked. A short while later, Jocelyn approached. Christina acknowledged that she had questioned Dex on Jocelyn's assertion and that Dex had verified Jocelyn's accuracy. Well, I wish I wasn't, just for the record. And in retrospect, I really didn't need to inform you in the manner that I did, Jocelyn remarked. Dex turned to go once Christina left, but Jocelyn stopped him, saying she felt she should give him an explanation. Although Jocelyn admitted that it wasn't her place to inform Christina of Sonny's actions, she clarified that she had been worried about what Sonny might do to Dex and had thought that informing Christina would be beneficial. Jocelyn said she knew Dex would be all right when Dex inquired if she was still worried. They would be fortunate to have him, she reassured him, and inquired whether he had heard anything from the police school. Although Jocelyn admitted that she was no angel, and that she was in no position to criticize him or anybody else, since she had done things that she was not proud of, Dex acknowledged that he had a lot to make up for. Dex remained silent when Jocelyn left. Drew welcomed Willow to his office at Aurora Media and expressed his gratitude for her time. Willow made fun of his stiffness. She smiled and told Drew that Amelia had enjoyed her first swim lesson as he laughed and thanked her for coming. Michael joined them a few moments later. Drew gave Willow and Michael an explanation of why he had requested a meeting, saying that Aurora Media had been approached by a non-profit to handle their public relations. When Drew mentioned that the group was also looking for a spokesman, Willow was the first person that came to mind. Willow seemed shocked and speechless, but Michael gently reminded Drew that she was a private person. Willow acknowledged that she was new to being a spokesman and thanked Drew for considering her. According to Drew, the New Tomorrow Institute assisted individuals in locating bone marrow donors and arranging cord blood donations. Drew noted that Willow was especially suited for the job because she had survived leukemia and had profited greatly from a bone marrow transplant. Nina stormed into the office a few seconds later to alert Drew to an issue, but she abruptly halted when she noticed Willow. Willow promised Drew she would consider the situation and get back to him. Nina voiced her disappointment that Willow had hardly spoken to her since Michael and Willow left. Nina was reminded by Drew that she had interrupted a meeting, but she wasn't sure if she should give Willow a call or send her a text. After giving Willow some space advice, Drew shifted the conversation by inquiring as to what had been so urgent that Nina had stormed into his office. Carly allegedly gave Nina a hard time about some standard maintenance at Nina's office, according to Nina. Infuriated by Nina, Drew laughed. I wonder Nina where she got that idea from. She was on the same team as Drew. In what world am I on the same team as you? Asked the man. Nina answered. The one where Carly and Jason screwed us both over. She wanted to know what his payback plan was, 
but since Carly and Jason hadn't put him in jail, he wasn't motivated to pursue them. Nina countered that by keeping Drew from being married to Carly and divorcing him once Jason came back, she had saved him. Drew asked sarcastically if Nina wanted a thank you, clearly stunned. Nina said she wanted something else, and she grabbed for Drew. She gave him a deep kiss, but he pulled away and headed for the door. Arrogant, Nina inquired as to if it had been too much for him. He silently shut the door, turned to face Nina, and drew her into his arms for a kiss. They yanked one of his clothes off and staggered to a neighboring table in a passionate embrace, which immediately heated things up. John went up to a hostess at the hotel's restaurant and asked her whether Jason was eating there. Carly approached the hostess and asked if she could help, but she was told that she couldn't divulge any information regarding the reservations. As Carly and John greeted one another, the hostess moved aside, and he said he had wanted to meet the new owner of the property. Well, you already know Jason, and if you're looking for the new owner, you found her, Carly replied. She made it clear right away that she actually owned a portion of the hotel. John inquired about the sudden change in circumstances after following Carly to the bar. She had told him she never expected to get the hotel back, he remembered. Carly attested to Jason's purchase of the hotel from Nina and his subsequent gift to her. The fact that Jason had given Carly the motel without asking anything in return astonished John. That wasn't how Jason did things, Carly clarified. When he does or says something he means it, remarked Carly. John admitted that he didn't think Carly would accept such a gift because he thought she valued her independence too much. Carly gave him her word that he was correct. She talked candidly about the prior chances she'd had to reclaim her hotel, all of which she had declined. John was intrigued as to why Carly had turned down Michael's offer, so she gave her explanation. She didn't want to take the chance of Michael becoming embroiled in her SEC issues, which she was positive John was well aware of. John gave a nod, and Carly continued by disclosing that she had been adamant about regaining the hotel on her own terms. John questioned Carly's decision to take the money from Jason after she had turned down offers from Sonny, Michael, and Nina. Because I wasn't the type to take back my hotel. For him, that is, Carly remarked. Carly informed John that since Jason wasn't present to stop it, he had come to believe that he was to blame for her losing the hotel. Did John think Jason was correct? Probably, Carly responded. Carly acknowledged that Jason had been quiet when she had questioned him about it, but she went on to say that she could see it in his eyes that he had experienced some hardship. Carly noted that while there were unavoidable consequences from Jason's absence, one of the few things he could resolve was the motel. John understood. So, you swallowed your pride and let him. Although she was happy to have her hotel back, she insisted that she wouldn't have taken the gift from anybody else. You robbed him of it. For him, John murmured. Carly acknowledged that she would recur. Carly was told to enjoy her stay by John. Michael and Willow came inside the restaurant after John departed. Carly welcomed them with joy, and Willow confided that she had already seen changes made to the motel. Michael and Willow discussed Drew's offer when they took a seat. Willow needed to know that Michael did not want her to feel compelled to accept. Willow said that she was touched by Drew's offer, but she would consider her options before responding. Anna went into Jason's office at Corintho's Coffee and thanked him for agreeing to meet. She stated that in order to discover out who was running pikemen and shut them down, there were several things he needed to know, which was why she wanted to debrief him. Such as, inquired Jason. First of all, Anna stated, I believe Valentine is involved. Adding, big time. Jason was informed by Anna about her previous interactions with Valentine and Jack Brennan during their time at the WSB. Valentine's WSB agent status astonished Jason, but Anna clarified that Valentine's status was desk agent. Anna revealed that she had placed second in the class and Brennan had finished first, which she thought was the result of sexism. Valentine had finished high up too, but Brennan had been a pragmatist. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.